Well, it's hot. It's hot. Hi, everybody. I'm here today to talk about, as you guessed it, this little guy. This is an appliance that you never knew you needed until today, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. This is a hot water dispenser. If you have any Asian friends or if you're Asian, well, it depends like what kind of Asian. This is something that you would have seen. This is very typical in, I would say, Chinese, Korean, Japanese households, but you don't have to be Asian. <laughs> to have this, it's fantastic. I mean, if you work in an office, you might have hot water dispensers on the water cooler, for example, or on the coffee machine. This is that, but at home and a little bit better. And I'll tell you why. I already talked about this in another video. I feel like it got overlooked and I wanna give it the attention that it deserves. It is a workhorse. It is a beast, this machine. I use this almost every day. This is a Zoshi Roshi hot water dispenser. And this one looks really pretty because it was a more limited edition version that no longer exists, but there are many other ones that exist out there on the market right now. And I'm gonna link a couple of them down below based on different needs, based on different budgets. So you should take a look at the description if you want some more information on that. I'm gonna use this to go over some of the features that are pretty common throughout all of the hot water dispensers, the Zoshi Roshi ones, as well as additional features. And then from there, you can assess what makes sense for your needs. So why would you want this? You're thinking, I could just boil hot water on a good old kettle, good old fashioned kettle. Listen, if that works for you and you don't have a problem with it, go for it. But I'm someone that is extremely impatient and I'm also into efficiency. And I also have a very short attention span. It wouldn't be unlike me to set the hot water, then walk away, then completely forget it, wait for it to cool, and then just two hours later realize I didn't make my tea and then have to do the whole process over until until I have to go to bed and never have my tea. So what's great about this, you can make hot water instantly. You're thinking, okay, I don't drink tea. What else could I use this for? So many things. If you're a coffee drinker and you like Americanos, you can use this. I also use this for pour over. Now, I know that people get really picky with their coffee temperatures and stuff. There are several temperature settings that you can set on this. I have three, but most of the Zoshi Roshi machines I've seen have more. I've seen them go from 160, 175, 190, 208. So it gives you quite a big temperature range. I don't have a thermometer to test the temperature, but what other people have been saying is that it's pretty accurate. The water that comes out of here is maybe two Fahrenheit off of the temperature display. And that might just be because it's going through the spout and, and then it comes out and it hits the air and it loses a bit of temperature. That could be it. But even in a James Hoffman video about pour over, he actually did some tests and it didn't seem that the water temperature was that big of a deal. Now I know that coffee people, coffee nerds are gonna go, ah, it's a big deal. But listen, I made pour over with this. At the time I was using pre-ground store-bought coffee and I was happy with the results. So I've used this for pour over. If you want something no fuss, easy, that's what you could use this for. Also really great, you can make cup noodles instantly or almost instantly because you just have to wait three minutes for it to cook. You can also use this for instant oatmeal. Anything basically that has the word instant in it, you can have it instant, which is freaking phenomenal. I love this thing so much. I've also used this for other things like crafts and for cleaning. For crafts, when you have an old candle and there's leftover wax in there and you wanna get rid of it, what you do is you typically put hot water in it and you let it sit a bit for the hot wax to melt and then you can just wipe it all off. It just makes it super convenient. Or when I wanna clean my portafilter on my espresso machine and I need to use kafisa powder, I use my hot water dispenser to just put that, melt the kafisa powder and then put my portafilter for cleaning. I've also used this to clean my retainers and mouth guard with a tablet. Beef broth concentrate, that's great for that before you throw it in whatever you need for your cooking. The possibilities are endless. Whatever you need hot water for, at an instant, it's here. So the way it works is, you put in room temperature water, you set the temperature that you want, and then it'll boil to 212, and then it'll go down to your temperature. Mine is a smaller one, mine's a 2.2 liter. Typically seen them in larger sizes, but they do come in smaller sizes. This was the only size available for this look. 
For my 2.2 liter small one, it takes about 20 minutes for it to reach 212 Fahrenheit, which is the boiling temperature of water, and then a little bit of time for it to go down to the temperature that I set at 205. Little tip, there are steam vents here. When you do boil it, make sure to have it away from the cabinet so that the steam has room to escape. So you're not just putting all that steam on your cabinets, which may be okay, may not be okay, but why take the risk? Just have it away. You don't want the high heat steam messing up the finish of your cabinets. Then you're just gonna create so much trouble for nothing. And then when it's done steaming, just push it back where it belongs. The bigger the capacity, perhaps the longer it would take. I would suggest you don't stray away from Zoshi Roshi. There's many other companies that have made this. There's the Tiger brand, there's Panasonic, but Zoshi Roshi is Japanese and it is one of the top of the line. I would not even bother with any other one. I've had mine for a long time. I've had mine since 2010, but there was a few years I stopped using it because I was living at home and I didn't, my mom had one. I would say I've been using it for five years consecutively. I don't even know how long my sister and my mom has had hers. I've read on Reddit that some person had it for seven years and it was still kicking. Then they donated it to work so they could buy a bigger capacity one. So in terms of durability, I have not had a problem. It's still kicking, it's doing really well. All of them have a swivel base for your convenience as well as a magnetic cord because imagine if you were a kid is running around and for some reason this is out there and then they trip and imagine this thing falling, this whole tub of hot water. Well. It will not because there's a magnetic cord that plugs in just like that and then it makes a little beep beep when it comes out and on. You have a carrying handle which is always convenient to carry this around and then there's a push thing up here to be able to open it and it's really well designed that there's a little spout there that all the hot water goes right into there and it doesn't drip everywhere else. There's also a little spout right here so when you spill out the water, it'll go out. You have an unlock button and then a dispense button. So there's a little double feature in case your kids are running around and playing with it. I mean, if they're old enough to reach it though, they're probably old enough to use it, I would assume. Then there's the anti-drip spout. It prevents dripping. Once in a while, it still will drip, but it, it's pretty rare. There's a little LCD screen for you to select your temperatures and to be able to see a little bit what's going on if there's other features that I'll get into later. There's a food grade non-stick interior. There's also a water level window with a little like red dot thingy so you can see how much water you have in there. There are other functions like a timer function which will turn the machine off based on your timer and then turn it back on so you can save on electricity. Let's say if you're worried about having this heating element on all the time, I mean, I've had it for years and I've never had any issues, but let's say that's something that does worry you, well, that timer setting would help you save energy and you can rest easy knowing that it's off when you are sleeping. Other features I've seen are something called cafe drip, which is supposed to dispense the water a little bit slower for I'm assuming pour over. It's a 60% slower pour. However, if you're a coffee person, even a non-fancy coffee person, you're probably going to have the gooseneck kettle or gooseneck jug, which I've purchased on Amazon for 15 bucks. So that's not something I see as a feature that you must have. Maybe you are very not fussy, you're a minimalist and you want the least amount of things possible. That could be a feature that would be useful for you. There's another feature called quick temp mode. And what it does is it actually brings the water up to the temperature without going to a boil which I don't know how good it is or not because boiling the water helps dechlorinate it a little bit. So what it does is it just brings it to the temperature. So the lower your temperature, the faster it'll be to be ready. There is a graph that I grabbed from one of the product listings and it shows that for a four liter Zoshi Roshi with quick temp mode, let's say we're going for the 195, but I'll put all the temperatures there, but for 195 Fahrenheit with a quick temp mode, 26 minutes versus an hour and 55 minutes. An hour and 55 minutes for the regular boiling and then temperature setting means that it's, like I said, boiling and then bringing down to temp. So earlier when I said it takes 20 minutes, that 20 minutes is just to get to a boil. Take some time after that for it to bring the temperature down. And that can take a bit of time. You get a lot more savings if you have lower temperatures like 160 Fahrenheit. Instead of taking seven hours to boil to 212 and then bring it down to 160, it'll take you an hour to go from room temp to 160. But 160 Fahrenheit is so low, I think the 
only reason you would ever use that is if you have very delicate white teas or something that you want to drink. Another tip, don't let this ever be too empty before you refill it. There is a safety feature where it will auto shut off if it detects that there is no water left, but when there's little water left, it won't do that. Not in my case anyway. Can you imagine this gigantic thing that's almost empty with very little water in there that's heating at a high temperature? It's not great for your machine and at some point it created kind of rust spots on the non-stick interior, which I was able to clean out with the cleaning products. Don't scratch anything. Don't bring a sponge in here. It's a non-stick interior. You don't want to ruin that. You don't need that. That's unnecessary. When I notice that it's getting quite low, when it gets to this spot right here, maybe that's what that icon means. Maybe it means fill me up with some more water. Huh, that actually could be accurate. I did not read the manual. <laughs> There's easy to hear sound indicators when you press different things, like different temperatures. You can also reboil your water. You can, oh, I just changed the temperature setting, so it's doing its thing right now. Let's just, let's just bring it back to 190. Yep, look how fast it goes. Okay, well, hopefully you can still hear me. There's little sounds and stuff with your LCD with your selection. When it boils, it'll make noise to give you a heads up that it's done. Honestly, it's so well designed, I can't think of anything that they're missing. I have some feelings when it comes to the design and the look, but they've improved it over the years. You can get much nicer ones. Before it used to be white with this floral pattern and it looked very like grandma's house, which is fine, but it's not a look that I want to go for. I mean, unless you want, you're getting it for grandma and grandma loves it or you really like floral patterns, but they have gotten much more muted looks. They have not made another one of these very design looking ones. It was from a collection that they still have a couple of pieces from, but they haven't repeated this. Don't know why. Mine actually only has three temperature settings, uh, but to be honest, I pretty much always use the 205 temperature setting, which it's currently bringing itself to right now. Other features, VE, hybrid. So VE stands for vacuum electric and it's a hybrid model. So what it does is it uses a little bit less electricity because a passive system to keep it all warm, kind of like a thermos. Whereas mine probably uses a little bit more electricity to keep it warm and keep it at that temperature that's set. Oh, that's the beeping noise I was talking about that says that it's ready. Right now it's at 212 and it's going to go back down to 205. In terms of electricity though, I don't remember the exact calculation. I had done it before and I had read that this uses something between 30 to 60 watts of power, depending on electricity costs in different areas and where you live. Let's say averaging it out, it'll cost you roughly $5 a month in electricity to run this thing. Without the vacuum electric hybrid model, probably the bigger size, a three to four liter size. But let's say you're looking at a five to $10 price range maybe even less if you have the vacuum electric hybrid. There's a little bit of maintenance with this machine to descale. It's really easy. They sell these packets, but what I would suggest is that you get citric acid and you put a couple of tablespoons in there. I'm going to link everything down below, including the recipe that I use. And those are really cheap to just come by. You can even get them in health food stores. You don't have to get their special one. I've been using it. It works fantastic. You can also use citric acid for other parts in your house to clean things. And every now and then you'll notice a little bit of white mineral deposits in the inside of the nonstick. Don't wipe it away. Don't take a sponge in there. Don't put soap in there. Just put the citric acid and then put it to the clean mode. That'll take a bit of time. Mine takes about an hour and 20 minutes for that cleaning mode. And that's a 2.2 liter. So you're going to be without hot water for a little bit, which is sad. So if you have guests coming over and you know you want to pour some tea or Americanos, just make sure to put some water in there and that it's full so you don't run out of it. When I had a friend coming over and she drank a lot of tea with me, I would always make sure that this thing was full. I would always have it ready to go because we would pretty much finish an entire one in uh, wait, a day, a day or two. What size do you need? Like I said, this is a 2.2 liter. It's really tiny. It's good for one person, maybe two. It depends on how much you drink. It's such a hard question to answer. I go through times where I'm drinking so much tea and I have to refill this every other day. Some people, this could last them a week. When I don't drink that much tea, this lasts me a good week, I would say. 
when I have my friend over and we're drinking teas that last me a day. I would say if you're a family, go for a bigger one. A 2.2 liter, I don't even know if they exist. I think they start at three liters. So if you're somebody that feels like you'd be using a lot, go for the bigger one. But even then, it doesn't really matter because you would just refill it more often. Don't forget, if you have a bigger one, it's gonna be heavier to transport as well. So if your sink is really far away, you gotta just weigh those things out a little bit. Or if you find it super annoying to refill, go for the bigger one. If you have the space for it, go for the bigger one. If you don't have the height for it, go for the smaller one. If you don't have the budget for it, go for the smaller one. There's a lot of factors to consider. I'm bringing up a couple, you're gonna have to figure out your water consumption for this. I would say a four liter is a good safe bet for a family. A three liter is probably good if you're a couple. In terms of pricing, you're gonna see the price range range somewhere in the hundreds to two hundreds, I believe. The more features you'll have, the more expensive it'll get. One note about the vacuum electric hybrid model is that you're thinking, okay, well, it's a bit more pricey. Why don't I just go for the other one? Well, if you're more environmentally conscious and you don't want to use that much electricity, one way to reduce your electricity usage, or if you're thinking about it in terms of cost savings, depending on where you live and depending on the cost of electricity, you'll make that money back in the long term. So it's an upfront cost for long-term savings because like I said, this thing has lasted me. If you're looking at long-term savings, but everybody's budget is different, everybody's situation is different, you make the best decision for your current situation. If I were to get a new one today, I would get a, I don't know if they have this, but I would get a three liter hybrid VE model, VE being vacuum electric, the passive thermos system. That would be my pick personally. So that's it. That's what I have to say about my Zoshi Roshi hot water dispenser. I love it so much. Make sure my face is not on the vent. That would have hurt. I mean, it's a little bit of air escaping, but not. Yeah, a little bit. It is a must have tool. I'm curious to know what you would use this for. If you have one, what do you use it for? If you don't have one, are you considering picking one up? Because I think it's fantastic. So many people don't know about this thing. So like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Let me know if you have any questions and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.